Hi, I'm Kathy Futrell and welcome to the Church of the Palms and this is Watercolor Wednesday. Today we're going to paint orchids in watercolor. I have a few examples here of working from photographs and sketching from life as well as rendering the images that we use from photos. So come join us today. All right, welcome everybody. <laughs> I'm ready to I'm ready to paint today. Oops. Here we go. Um, I have some information about orchids. As a matter of fact, um, recently I was looking at some beautiful paintings by an artist called Martin Heed. Uh, this is an illustration of one of his pieces when he uh, visited and painted in South America. And this orchid is an exquisite example of how the orchid, not just as a flower, but a landscape, can be incorporated into this very um, uh, sublime, um, luminous painting. Now this is in oil, uh, but our rendering today is going to be in watercolor. Uh, there's, there's the hummingbirds, and this gorgeous uh, hinted at landscape coming around the flower. Um, this is a magnolia, which has nothing to do with orchids today. Did, did you think we had one of those? Um, no, this is just my reference to share. So the handout that you all will have today is, uh, anyway, for our viewing, we're going to be looking at four different versions of orchids. And I also brought with me some watercolors that perhaps you do not have. The colors that we will be using are Rose Matter and Wild Fuchsia and Janet's Violet Rose. Now, I have plenty of paint. <laughs> and if you don't have the exact color, hopefully you can use something like your rose matter with a blue. I'd use, I have jo Joe's blue here, but it could also be that you use any blue like a cobalt or ultramarine with a red, with a uh, Lizrin crimson or something. Now this, I'm just gonna put out a little spot. Here is my wild fuchsia. Uh, but obviously it's uh, got some other colors sitting on top of it. And I'm going to bring those colors around to you if you don't have them and let you give it a try. And my rose matter is, as you will see if, when I put this on the palette, is very similar to the fuchsia, but it's really more of a red color, whereas the fuchsia has a pink quality to it. And with my uh, Janet, this is Janet Rogers' favorite color. Janet Rogers is a wonderful watercolor artist. She and her husband, uh, Steve Rogers, work um, in nature, work with nature. Janet is known for her flower painting, and Steve is known for his water scenes and also abstraction pieces. The blue, the blue that I'm gonna put out is really the same blue, I think I have it here. It's a Joe's blue, but it's a lot like cobalt. Um, but I wanted just to se separate. Jim, can you open this tube? I can't get it open. All right, so I'm working with my flats and rounds today. I'm going to be doing a painting. This is an orchid painting that I recently completed, and it has a background. Because I needed to accentuate the white flowers, I put in um, a dark background. But because I'm going to be using one of the pink shapes, um, and this is another example of working from a photograph, a different kind of flower, sketching the flower, putting in the background, painting the leaves, composing so that I make the flower the main motif of the design. So in my earlier information, I said, you know, sketching is really vital to the watercolor painting, and you don't have to make it perfect. You just use your reference. You know, I think I'm going, if I were, if I were gonna put in a background, I would choose to do this version here with the orchids. However, when I first saw this online, and this is not one of my photographs, um, I prefer to work from my photographs, but most of my orchid paintings have been done by uh, going to uh, Selby Gardens here in lovely Sarasota and sketching because they have this wonderful orchid. Um, oh, Jim, did you get the blue open? It won't come open. Oh, you did get it open. Oh, what a mess. Yikes, Jim. Never mind. I think I'll use my ultramarine. 
Okay, well, I'm sorry about it getting on your hands. Yikes. Um, the, the blue is called a Joe's blue, but ultramarine will do. All right, so there's the, if you don't have a pair of pliers, it's really hard to get one of those tubes open sometimes. All right, so what I'm doing is sketching right now and indicating where the design is, is going. This is going to be my main subject, and I have placed it in the quadrant that is in, if we think about uh, designing our uh, composition, this, this is, uh, I'm sort of altering my design by going more um, vertical than horizontal. This piece could be chopped here and I'm going to extend it. So let's talk about the focal point. The focal point of any design should be in one of these quadrants. And I choose to make my, my design <coughs> here to start with and then move through the rest of the design. So I usually say start with your focal point. And um, this was the minor petal and I may have made it a little big. Let's get, let's get going so we can do these beautiful colors. Um, here and this is the, is, it's like t three leaves, three main petals and three, thank you, darling, bless your heart. And I'm sorry for all that trouble. Okay, so here's, here we do have that nice blue. And we're, we'll need some greens, obviously, for our leaves, but I think most everybody has what green colors you will need. So I need some white left in the petals, and I try to indicate that so that I don't forget to include them. This one has a nice irregular shape and an interesting white area as well that extends right out of this. Uh, I am thinking as I go along, and sometimes that causes me trouble. Okay, yeah, because I need to change something when I think. All right, and then we have another shape that comes here. This is very exotic, as, as orchids are very exotic. And then we have another um, beautiful orchid that appears here, and I, I want to get this sketch as quickly as I can so that I can get to the painting and let you get to the painting. This too has, so I've got this one going in this direction and this one's going in this direction. So they're, they're the same shape, similar shape, although we want to have variety and we want to have a sense of unity through the repetition of our lines and shapes. And I want to let this be the center line and this one moving here. With that said, I'm going to begin to create some stems that I see, but I'm not copying this photograph exactly as it is. I see another stem coming out, and I want to include that, so I'm touching the top. I'm also touching uh, the sides, and I want to include <coughs> other shapes that connect and make interesting positive and, ne positive and negative designs. I almost feel that I will have to do a third flower in this arrangement simply because it's calling for more detail here at the bottom. And without trying to be too similar to the one I've just completed, I will turn this shape uh, more to the side and let this go behind. And I, you know, I do have to make this up as I go along. And then include uh, leaves that are part of the design. And I want to break this, this line in two. I don't want, um, maybe that could come here <coughs> because, <coughs> pardon me, the orchid stems are, and the leaves, are definitely going to be moving in different directions. This one connector has uh, multiple flowers blooming on it and more flowers that kind of tend to go and grow off of this. Even, even the stem here has a flower that's disappearing up at the top 
and maybe even another stem that's coming down and suggesting that there's a smaller one here. I'm going to want to include more leaves in this lower design and I'm thinking about another stem that comes through here and maybe two it's broken with another uh, leaf petal and another leaf petal here. Okay, so now I feel like I have made my design pretty asymmetrical. It needs something right here, so maybe I'll look at this shape and pop that in uh, and get started. All right, so I have to have logic, which means that some kind of stem would be coming up from here. Uh, this leaf here has a twist to it. There is a leaf here and maybe um, another one here, maybe something that connects. So uh, it's, a, it's about arranging and designing um, what is going to be left white as I t intend to do. And so just referencing this one picture right now, I'm going to begin to paint. So uh, with that in mind, I'm going to paint with flats and rounds and begin with a little bit of really nice color. This is, uh, I'm going to show you the difference between the rose matter and that uh, wild magenta. And although it's not a lot of difference in color, it's the brilliance, uh, the intensity of color that we have with the magenta. It is a very hot pink. And I don't know if you are familiar with the color that's called um, opera, but it's very similar. This gets into more of a purple. The violet, uh, Janet Violet, is a more purpley color simply by taking my blue, ooh, and I got too much of it, simply by taking my blue with any combination of these colors, look at the gorgeous purple that I have. So this is where I'm going to be going with my flower. And if you don't have these colors, they're difficult to make. You can't just take red and blue sometimes. You have to have something with the strength of a magenta or um, that violet color. So here's where I'm going to start. I have all these puddles of beautiful pinks and purples and I'm going to try to keep my paper as white as possible and begin to paint the brilliance of these colors. I, I tended to say, hmm, let's throw a little bit of that really dark blue uh, into the, and, and we do have some, some of that Joe's blue. Now, as I move this toward the uh, center of the flower, I am seeing, trying to throw my brush off the table, I am seeing the pink. So I'm going to that magenta and I'm going to just add the magenta and, and drag that color in with this color. Uh, touch, a touch of water, a touch of magenta, and uh, imitating the color, this brilliant color. Um, those of you who were uh, here earlier today, I was talking about a limited palette of burnt sienna and ultramarine. This is sort of the direct opposite of working with limited. This is like using a really beautiful color to achieve the feeling of flower petals. And always work your shapes with the direction of the petal itself so that you end up with the vein, the feeling of the veins going through the flower petal. So each flower petal is going to be pretty much painted individually and I'm not going to do all 16 of them. I'm only going to do about four or five and then I'm going to do some green and I'm going to let you get started. At the end of class today I'll probably have a little more finished and we'll take a photo of it so that will help you. Now I do not see quite as much purple in this extended petal right here. Is there, can everybody see that petal right there that I'm referring to? So it's not a mu that much purple. I'm going to reference the photos. If I were choosing this or this flower, it's obviously got some similarities in the colors, but you just simply have to make the observations and paint what you see. I'm painting over. You know, there's, <coughs> let's talk about this for a second. There are several ways of blending, okay, because that's what we're doing is blending. You can blend here by mixing one color with another color and putting it on, okay? Or you can start with one color like I did with the purple, and <clears throat> you can do the color here, 
and then change the color, <coughs> excuse me, again, which I'm doing with the magenta, and do the blending on the paper. Now there's actually a third way. Let's say when you're all finished with your painting and your paint has dried lighter than you wanted it to, which happens. There is a third way to blend, and that is to do a wash over what you already have painted. I know that makes sense because we've been painting in watercolor quite a while. So keep in mind that there's, there's more than one way to blend. I like blending while the paint is wet, but I will say be careful not to go in and blend after something has partially dried. That doesn't always work but when it, you end up with blooms, uh, so while it's wet, it's an easy way to, to go into it. All right, so this next one, I'm simply repeating myself from right here. So you, you get the idea and you don't need me to keep painting um, on and on and on. I'm not sure why I left that white, but I'm not gonna get rid of it. Um, why did I do, oh, at this point, I see my color is different. I don't think it's that purple. I think I need, the color I think I need is actually that rose matter with the blue. So I'm blending this now, not with the magenta. I sort of changed in midstream. I'm going right up to this shape right here, which has some yellow in it. And perhaps I should have started with that. To be honest, I know I should have, but oh well. Um, maybe, uh, I can integrate that after this completely dries. But I do see some, some very light pink places and I'm just gonna have to leave that. I think I can just add water to my brush and where it appears so pale, I'll just put that in right here and uh, I can lift a little bit of that purple that's really not there and I could take a little more of that rose matter and kind of place that over here on this side where I now see it. And the strokes, the petals themselves uh, have this kind of pattern going on. Whoops. All right. So uh, without much more, without much more uh, painting of this one flower, I think I could go on to stems and leaves. So I see that this has, so let me try it this way. I'm going to put down the pink. This is the magenta. And while that's still wet, I'm going to pick up more of that purple. And I'm just going to integrate it and blend it right in, in that wet wash. However, by doing this, I don't have the streaks that I see. So I know <clears throat> that I'll still have to come back. For example, I'll still have to come back on top of these. <coughs> Pardon me. In order to see those lines, I will have to generate strokes on top to get that effect. All right, that, I think that makes sense. After it's dry, you will still need to add those strokes. All right, I'm gonna soften that up because that, would, that was meant to sh illustrate what happens on top. To do, the le to do these lovely stems and leaves, we have talked about a light green and the light green, and you know I didn't bring any of this in case you don't have it, but this is the American Journey paint that I use called Skip's Green. And it's uh, Skip Lawrence's favorite green, and it's a yellow green, so you could actually, let's make it. If you have any good yellow, if you have any good yellow paint, a cad yellow, I use the Oriolan yellow as a transparent paint. And if you mix that with any green, like your Viridian green, which is the truest, brightest green. Now a hooker's green or a sap green already has the brown or red added to the green to make that green more of an earth green. So that doesn't work to make this lime green. But here basically is the lime green I'm referring to. All right, so any, any uh, yellow and any brilliant bright green will give you the light green. I'm probably not even painting this whole, I'm probably painting this whole painting today with round brushes. And I start always uh, on a stem like this with a light green and then, ooh, there's, this one has a whiteness to it so I have to watch out. Uh, this one is darker, but this one has a dark side. So I could take that Viridian Green, and just as I said,
browning the green, when you're working with petals of leaves, they are not bright green. You have to add the brown, or you could take any of these reds, and that will dull your green. And while this is still wet, you can come along on the outside here, and you can darken that edge, which creates um, the shadow side. In this case, it kind of goes all the way through uh, for your darker green. So you have a three-dimensional effect of the green leaves, a uh, stem, sorry. So let's do a leaf or two, and let's just, uh, let's just pay attention to this leaf. And I'm gonna use a little bit of red and a lot more of the viridian green to get my very, very dark green that I see. And these leaves, now every, um, every orchid flower has a different kind of leaf and they, they do vary um, and you're just going to have to make some observations. Um, I see a little light peeking out behind this leaf but as it goes back I go back to that darker green. Here I'm going to stick up. That blue is so intense. Oh my gosh. I'm going to use a little bit of it but obviously I got to get away from that there, I'm back to a dark, dark green using the blue with the red and the viridian. That is awfully strong, but here we go. It will fade. So, ooh, that's really too dark. Maybe it won't be dark at the end. Um, now, I have a dark edge here, and I have a little bit of a dark edge here. And then the rest of it is a paler green. So we go back to that skips green and add that. I'm going to keep a little rim here so that I don't touch and lose that nice edge. And I'm just trying to make it go there. And I'm going to make this leaf. Let's see, I need to make that happen a little better. This shape has again those lines of the veins and the darker green. So here we go with darker green. Seems like there's more dark on this side right now. Touch of red and this has also more lighter green in here. So it's the variations that make that green uh, more distinct and more beautiful. This continues, so I'm just trying to follow through with uh, the idea that the stems would go and disappear down at the bottom. I would also continue with uh, these green leaves in the same manner, just adding and changing the value as, of course I made, make up, I made up a lot of these leaves as I was going along so I think that um, you have to kind of determine if this is the top side and maybe this is turning in another direction that it might be a little darker. And uh, maybe this one is behind so it would go darker. But this is how I would build my design. And obviously I would keep painting these other flowers to represent the ones that I could see. I think that we're all ready to start painting, correct? Okay, uh, have fun, and I'll show you at the end. Okay, we're just going to keep painting, and we'll see um, the end shortly. Uh, what I'm doing is putting in these little background. Um, over here, I added some buds, did a little detail, let that be kind of nondescript. This back uh, flower, which doesn't even exist, I'm just going to put in... Um, behind the stem, keep it a little less detailed than the two larger ones that become my focal point here. But I'm using the same technique of uh, applying the washes and then gradually introducing the second color and blending that in. Everybody's work is looking so good right now. I think that's a picture.
All right. It looks yeah, almost yeah. surreal. I mean, it does. Um, it purple to yeah. wild yeah. fuchsia to we the rose matter, whichever color. They're sort of I'm running here, together here. now, but this is not well. as important yeah. as my first <laughs> two flowers. Well, yeah. But I'm getting this one in. Space over here. <laughs> And just dropping in some water to extend this idea. And now putting in a little more dark at the end and letting that kind of run into the flower where it would be the darkest. Giving the brushwork in the direction of the flower. This little flower is supposed to be popping behind this one, so uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and extend that and capture as much dark as I can in that spot to bring out the flower that's here. All right, so let's finish up the leaves, and we're going to be going back to our greens. And this is the skip green. And back and forth. I almost need to go a little bit heavier with a bigger brush since this will take less time. And going with um, a darker green as this disappears. Okay, this is going back behind there. And let's get some dark on this one and then go back to our skip screen. Did you like this? Oh, yes, I said you. Oh, they were funny. Skip's green is a beautiful green, yellow green. <laughs> it really does say <laughs> creating the stem. <laughs> and then, you know, I had a line here. I think that was supposed to be a bit of a stem. And this one I'm going to make is a light leaf. And I love how turn it on because... There, just a little change in the um, placement. Well, we're almost finished, so I'm going to just finish up these little veins here, and then we're going to call this done. This vein, of course, needs just a light green. I'm going to do the same thing with the light and dark on these quick little petals where I add the dark just to change the leaf shape a little bit. Same thing here. I like the point of a brush because it pretty much does that job without too much effort. And I hope you have enjoyed the painting today. Did, did you do this white with um, paint? I, um, I left the white of the paper, to be honest, and that was because I didn't need to have in, in the subject, as you can see right here, it is just white. So we have this change in color here. Now this one does seem to have a little bit of that brown or that what I would call um, yellow ochre a feeling. And I used the yellow with a touch of, um, I actually used a little bit of the ochre with a touch of this orange or burnt sienna. So that's really how I created that, but it does have a lot of water in it. So it just really gets created that way. To accentuate where my pencil lines are, if I want to make that little center a little more distinct, I could do something like that. All right, I think that, you know, I think I'm done.